And so, just like that, the IPL is here again. It's turned into a mature teenager. It's 17 years old. In a couple of years, it'll leave its teens behind and graduate to 94 games in a season. We'll have the IPL going all the time. And I'm sure a lot of you won't mind that at all because everyone loves it when IPL season comes along. I love it too. I've enjoyed the tournament right from the year one when the Rajasthan Royals won it against all odds. Shane Warne, two or three other players, lots of young players coming through. And that told us that we've got a product that was here to stay. And so, We'll start looking at all the teams in IPL 2024, starting with the Rajasthan Royals. And I'm very excited about the team that the Royals have put together this year because every one of the top six or seven batters strikes at greater than 140. There's a character about all of them. And if they all get going, around the same time at least, then they're going to give us some fabulous cricket to watch. So let's go through that side to tell you why I'm very excited about it. I saw Yashasvi Jaiswal very closely during the test matches and at times I thought he was playing T20 cricket. He hit Anderson for three sixes in a row. He hit Bashir for three sixes in a row. Last year he got 625 runs, striking at what, 160 plus. He is in the form of his life and I'm, I'm quite game to nominate him as an early choice for the leading run-getter in this year's tournament. He's so full of confidence. And at the other end, he's got a grizzled veteran of the wide ball game, but who, post-IPL 2023, is in fantastic form himself. Joss Butler turns up. When Joss Butler plays well, Rajasthan Royals play well. There's almost a leading indicator kind of relationship. And in the last few months, Butler has been in very, very good form too. A couple of seasons ago, Butler made over 800 runs. So Butler and Jaiswal together, one right, one left, one young, one still as flamboyant. It's a fabulous opening partnership. Then Sanju Samson. I love watching Sanju Samson bat. I don't think there's any secret. But I hope he looks upon this year's IPL as a means of marching into the national team as a number three batter in T20 cricket. Because he has the right ingredients, the right approach to it. He always says, I'm not here to score the most runs. I'm here to score runs as quickly as I can to allow my team to win. And that is what I think we will see with Rajasthan Royals through this year. So Sanju Samson at three is the position that he's best suited to play at. Then I think a very good choice that Rajasthan Royals have made. Rovman Powell is a high quality T20 player who I don't think has quite found himself in the IPL yet. He goes in the CPL, he makes runs. He goes around the world, he makes runs. But not quite sure of where he belongs in the IPL. I think knowing the kind of franchise Rajasthan Royals is, knowing the kind of person Kumar Sangakara is, I think they'll give him number four and say, Rovman Powell, go make this your number. Because he can bat in two gears when Rovman Powell starts hitting. Wow, he hits the ball really hard. So I'm looking Rovman Powell at number four and then to break it up, a left-hander at number five. He's a bit of an enigma, Shimron Hetmai. He's very colourful. He's got the most toothy, beautiful smile in the game. He can clobber a ball at the end. But all of a sudden, you wonder where Shimron Hetmai has gone. So they'll have, to, they'll have to sort of balance him a little carefully. But I think in that lineup at number five, he'll be wonderful. That leaves us with two young players that I'm looking forward to seeing this year. Part of the reason why I'm excited about Rajasthan Royals this year. Riyan Parag. Numbers that you look at and say, why would you want to look at him in this side? But Rajasthan Royals are a franchise that believes in investing in players a great deal. You've seen that investment coming through with Dhruv Jurel. You're seeing that investment coming through with Jaiswal. And at the end of last year, he was told, go to Ranji Trophy, bat at number four, bowl a lot of overs. He had a fabulous season in the Ranji Trophy. Came out to play the Mushtaq Ali tournament, striking at about 180, seven half centuries. If this is not Riyan Parag's year, then there will not be another year. Plus, I like the fact that he went and bowled a lot. So, Parag coming in at six, maybe even at five, Hetmeyer at six. And given the responsibility of being the sixth bowler, you've got to tell him, yes, I know Rothman Powell can play, but you have to be the sixth bowler. Play with that responsibility, learn to live with that responsibility, something he's done with Assam in first-class cricket this year. And then I've got Jurel at number seven. Can you imagine that side? Jurel came in as an impact sub last year and all of us said, where was he all these years? Now we know where he is. So I've got him at seven. That allows me only four bowlers. 
I'll have a bowler as my impact sub. Ravi Chandan Ashwin as wily as ever and Chahal with a point to prove. I mean, if you're a bowler as good as Chahal, how do you take one disappointment after the other? By just coming out and taking wickets. And every year, Chahal comes to the IPL and he takes wickets. And I want to see his determination and strength this year. Because, wow, there's a lot of players around the world that I know who say, if you can't find room for Chahal in your national side, you must be the best team in the world. So, Ashwin and Chahal, with the spin combo that's been good for Rajasthan Royals. Trent Bolt has shown in the IL-20 this year that he's still got it in him, he's still taking wickets, but they've got a backup in Andre Berger. And if they go and play on a spicy deck somewhere, they can play both of those, leave out Hetmeyer, they've got the batting depth to be able to make up for the loss of one of those players. Or they could be on a really slow surface, they want a, a turning surface, they want to play Adam Zampa, they can then leave out uh, Hetmeyer and play Zampa. The reason they can do that is they've got a free-hitting young player called Shubham Dube who can then come in as the, uh, as the impact sub. But the team that I have picked, I've got Kuldeep Sen as my impact sub. Now that they don't have Prasid Krishna, I've got Trent Bolt and Avesh Khan bowling the new ball with Kuldeep Sen as the third seamer, the two spinners and then a little bit of help from Rovman Powell and Rian Parag. The bowling, they had issues with the bowling last year. It was, they were conceding too many runs. I don't know if they've addressed that with the arrival of Avesh Khan because till IPL 22, Avesh Khan's star was on the ascendant. He's still done pretty well. He's been picked for India. Sometimes tends to go for too many runs. His economy rate is about 9.3 or thereabouts. But he's been traded in. They'll give him the new ball and I'll be keen to see how Avesh Khan goes with that. So, it's an exciting team. It's got its weaknesses like every other team does. So given all that, I'm backing Rajasthan Royals to make the playoffs this year. As I said, on the back of an outstanding top six in terms of power, on par with RCB and Mumbai Indians. I think they've got qualified spinners. If they can handle the bowling side and field well, then I think they'll have all their bases covered. But it all depends on how they play in Jaipur. When they were playing well, they made Jaipur their fortress. If they can play well in Jaipur, win a lot of home games, go to the bouncy surfaces of Mumbai and uh, Bangalore and do well over there, then I think they'll give themselves a very good chance. If they don't qualify this year, I'll be very disappointed and I hope they are too.